This is a very good question. And as some of you may know, when I talk about the dating process, I do not talk about number, the number of the date. I talk about the stages of dating. So right now we're gonna be referring to the first stage of dating. And one of the most important things we need to remember is not to get personal. So what are some of the good questions we could ask on the first date and in the first few dates? Imagine that you were on an airplane and somebody sat down near you or you were on the train and you got into a friendly conversation with them, right? You wouldn't share with them anything really personal, but if you have a good conversation going, you will talk about some things in general that maybe you know information about and the person you're sitting next to. So a little bit, you use that kind of a measuring stick. You talk to the person, you ask questions, more neutral. Actually, I think these words should be abolished and no energy should be given to them. Yes, we have some challenges. And I think if young men, women, parents, shatchanim, and coaches work together, we can overcome all these obstacles. Sometimes you go on a date and somewhere in the middle of the date or somewhere into the date, you just get clarity and you just know this is not for me. I always tell the young women and the young men, you have to be menschlich. You can't all of a sudden say, oh, I forgot I had an appointment somewhere. Uh-uh. You want to be nice, you want to be pleasant, and you want to stay there and make it through the evening. Every one of you have that power to be able to do that. You never know if this is not the guy for you or the girl for you. Be careful because the way you behave could be repeated to someone else who you want to go out with. So always be menschlich and whatever it takes, do whatever it takes to just make it through the evening. This is something that I often share. Rejection is protection. You thought that the date went fantastic. You really like this girl or this boy. How could it be that he doesn't like you in return? So just know that it needs to be good for both of you. If it isn't good for one, then it isn't good for the other. And sometimes it's the other that gets the clarity first. So believe in Hashem and trust the process and know that rejection is protection. Hashem is protecting you and letting you know that this just is not for you. It may feel too hard to, to, to take in right at the beginning, but with a little bit of time, it will become really clear to you and you will be thankful that Hashem gave you that insight. So if you are, have now decided to go out with this young man, that means it's after your parents have done some research and you have agreed to it, means that at this point, you know that he has the potential to be the right one. How do you know if he's the right one now? You don't need to know now if he's the right one. What you need to know right now is just whether you would like to get to know him more. And the more you get to know each other, the more you will know if this is the right one for you. The very best gift you could give yourself or your son or your daughter is to set them up from the get-go with the dating coach. He or she will give them tools, will clarify some of the do's and the don'ts as you start out, and they will be able to navigate the road of the dating with, in a much smoother way. They'll be able to avoid certain bumps in the road, they'll be able to avoid distractions and curveballs. When they have a chance to first talk with a coach, and actually get some great ideas of how to start out and what's important and what they should be looking for, the whole dating adventure will go in a much smoother way and they will just feel so much happier and so much better about everything. And what's even more important is that every single young man and every single young woman is an individual and so things have to be specially 
tailored to that individual. And that's the job of a good coach. We'll be able to tailor it to the individual and help them know what will work best for them. You know the right direction. Stay open-minded and be ready to listen to something different than what you always imagined. Always look for the good in the other person that's being mentioned. And each day, do something. Make a phone call, remind people that you're available and you're ready. And most important, be happy and show it. You ask, what is the proper age range when looking for a shidduch for your child? So the first answer I'm gonna give you, of course each individual person, what's right for them, and I'm gonna say is, try to stay as close to your child's age as possible. So then we can ask the question, okay, but what's the longest age? What's the, what's the, the greatest age difference that, that is okay? So we know that the Rebbe says that it should be with no more than 10 years. Within the 10 year range, it could work. And that's for that the boy be older than the girl. When it comes to a girl, sometimes a Shidduch idea will be presented that the girl is actually older than the boy. And that's okay. And the Rebbe says for that, that within three years, if the girl is up to three years older than the boy, definitely it could work and there's no, and there's no problem. So again, just to reiterate, what is the right age that you should look at for your child? Number one, go into it looking for that which is closest to your child's age. If something comes up, what is it okay? How far away can we go? Within 10 year range and not more. And the Rebbe clearly gives us advice and tells us, even though it could look right now that it's really good and things are gonna work out, more than 10 years later on, problem will present themselves. The age range will become even greater and the issues will come up. So this is the advice I could give you when you look when you're going out there to look for a young man or a young woman for your child. How do we stay confident? Very good question. Honestly, there might be some days that that really feels difficult. I think as long as we always keep in front of our eyes and remind ourselves constantly that really Shadduchim are made by Hashem. And if we put that Emunah and Bitachan in front of us to guide us and to lead us, we could keep being positive and hoping that we are one step closer to the right person. And as we know, every single morning when we get up, the first thing we say, as we all know, is the Modani. We thank Hashem that He gave us back our soul. And the most incredible thing about the Modani are the last three words where Hashem says, the last two words, Rabba Emuna Secha. We say, Hashem, your Emuna in, in us is incredible. It's Rabba, it's a lot. God, God has confidence in us that we're going to take on the day and do it right. So we need to know today, it's a brand new day. We just said Moda'ani, we get up. Today could be that really special day that you are going to meet the one that is meant for you. So it often means that we have to kind of dig a little deeper into us and bring forward that Emunah and Bitachem that we know Hashem has our back and Hashem knows exactly the right moment when we should meet the right person for us. Honestly, it's not one size fits all, okay? I know there are those who say three months is the maximum time you should date, but then you need to know. There are others who say six months is the maximum time and then you need to know. Personally, what I have found in my coaching of young men and women, each person is according to their schedule. And as long as every single date is going up a little bit more and a little bit more, even by the slightest bit, then you know you're okay. Just as we don't want the girls and boys to get engaged too quickly, we also equally don't want them to drag it on. But it's extremely important that both of them should be ready and both of them should be on board. And there could be a time that one takes a little bit longer to get there than the other, that's all fine. As long as we help them and we monitor it that it's going in the right direction and getting a little better each time, then we know we're doing well. Actually, 
I find that quite the opposite is what happens, okay? When I have the honor and the privilege to actually coach both the young man and the young woman at the same time, magic ends up happening and they end up getting to where they want to go and need to go in a much quicker and smoother way. And why is this? Because many times when the young girl comes home from a date and she shares with her parents what happened, and then the young man comes in, and then first the shatran has to call this parent and that parent. By the time each of this young man and this woman get the message and hear what it is that the other one was saying, it becomes what we used to call broken telephone. Half the message and half of what it's all about gets lost in the process. So when it is that I have the honor and privilege and I get to coach both of them at the same time, we could go straight to the things that are happening, we share the good things directly one to the other. I get to, if there is a red flag, I get to be able to show them and explain to them how it's really not that red flag that you thought you had to worry about, but maybe you just misunderstood the other. Or the contrary, if it really is one, I also get to get them so they don't have to continue dating without a purpose. So honestly, um, not only is it not a conflict of interest, it is something that I have found through the years of my work and my practice that it helps both the young man and the young woman and, and Shaduchim happen in a smoother, more relaxed and uh, quicker way avoiding many bumps in the road and avoiding unnecessary heartache. When both parents can take an active role in the Shaduchim for their sons and daughters. And what I mean is, uh, many times you'll get a suggestion, or even before that, the making the phone calls to try to find suggestions. It's equally important that both parents are involved and both parents are on board. And of course it'll come that sometimes maybe there's someone on that list when you do get a resume that the father may know or the mother may know. So of course, whichever person it is would be better for that person to make the phone call. But your sons and daughters should feel that you're both involved and it's your most important, you know, um, top of the list priority of what's going on in your lives when it comes to finding a shidduch for them. And then of course, as it progresses and it goes on, it's often times that either the mother will take the role, that they're the one who continues and talks with the shatrin and follows up with their sons and daughters, and sometimes the father will take the role. But I think that the boys and the girls should feel that both their parents are on board, both their parents are involved, and perhaps the one that has a little bit more of an involvement is sometimes either the one, number one, that actually has a physical time, and the other thing that's even maybe more important, the one that has a good uh, sprach, like a good um, relationship with their son or daughter. If it's equal on both sides, that's good. And when it's not, if one parent leads, that's good. But I think it's so important that our sons and daughters feel and know that both parents are equally involved, both parents are on board, and both parents will do whatever it takes to help them get where they want to go and to find that right person for them. Choosing which friends to put on your resume is something actually extremely important. You need to take some time to think about it, okay? You want to know that the girl who you're putting on really likes you and really knows you. And she is going to take the time and care to represent you in the right way. So of course they're going to tell the truth and there's only good things to say about you. But make sure the girls you choose, number one, they should know that you're putting them on your resume or the boys for that matter. Number two, it's someone that you're confident that really knows you in the ways that they need to and will really say the things in the right way for the right reasons so that they can really represent you in the best way possible.